This time on Hot Rod Unlimited, we're 12 years old again on our Taco Mini Bike, but this time we've got enough horsepower to kill us. So why is Hot Rod Unlimited talking all about mini bikes today? Well, it's because they're little two-wheeled hot rods and we all remember them from when we were little kids and had to have one because we probably read about them in a car magazine. Back in like 1960, the car magazines were all over the mini bike scene. As a matter of fact, you saw them in Hot Rod Car Craft and especially Rod and Custom. Lynn Weinland was a guy who was the art director of Rod and Custom and then the second editor. And he also worked for a guy named John Steen who was involved in making mini bikes. And he was the PR guy who came up with the name mini bike. And back then guys were racing them. There was go-kart raceway out in Azusa, California where guys were dicing it up on these things in go-karts. It was the scene. It was owned by Duffy Livingston. Also, a guy named Donald Jolly was an artist who worked for Rod and Custom doing freelance illustrations and things. And he came up with that little bean drawing of the taco that you know so well. So all of these guys at the magazine really made the go-kart and mini bike world happen. And it's happening again which is why we're gonna go check out today Joe's mini bike reunion and see the scene of these crazy hot rodded mini bikes going on these days. Why mini bikes? Because, like get 20 guys together. Uh, 21 of them own Harleys and 22 of them own Camaros. Everybody's got them. Mini bikes? One guy on the block of 10 has got a mini bike. It was smart enough to keep it. Most of these maniacs that come here uh, never got mini bikes out of their systems if they were into mini bikes when they were kids. Many of the other folks are the folks that never had them because their parents were too smart. 1969 was the first year I went to a mini bike race, and six months later was the first year I won a national championship. I was a three time world, two time national mini bike champion starting in 1969, and my dad thought I was in church in Garden Grove. The people who are now buying the Taco Mini Bikes are, it first starts with the men who had them as kids, and when they were young boys. And there's two kinds of guys, either one who had them as a boy, young boy, or the one who wanted one and their parents wouldn't let them have them. So they're both buying them. But what's nice now is um, they're now buying them for their kids. A whole new generation of kids are being introduced to something that is 50 years old. Parents would like to see their kids balance their life between computer games and getting outdoors. They want that um, thing that they had. When I was a young kid living in upstate New York, uh, I saved and saved and begged and cried and whined until I got my first mini bike. And I instantly went from the skinny kid in the apartments to the cool guy because I had a mini bike, damn it. And with that mini bike, I got some really good scars. I gained a little bit of independence and uh, it got me started into mechanics because this is where you learn trial and error mechanics and this is where you learn that if you don't put the brakes on correctly, you're not going to stop and you're going to get killed. And unless the gas works, you don't go anywhere. And unless the carburetor's clean, it don't start. So mini bikes helped me get started on my path and my love for cars. It's just hot rodding. It's, it's basic hot rodding at its purest, cheapest form. The lawnmower engine, two wheels doesn't have to look like this, doesn't have to do nothing, can be a chopper, can be you know high, low, whatever. Like so many forms of motorsports, the hobbyists, the, the enthusiasts, the guys who were hot rodding the mini bikes, they were all the West Coast guys. And that's where they were, and that's where they still are. Guys like Dave Miller uh, has his own shop, still to this day building custom mini bikes. Stretch frame mini bikes that go 100 miles an hour. My lawnmower shop buddy had a Kohler 800cc V-twin lawn tractor engine that started out as 29 horsepower, 44 foot pounds at 5,500 RPMs. So just with turbocharging and a little tweaking on the camshafts and some O-rings in the heads, it's 102 horsepower, 91 foot pounds at 6,500. I built the frame, fuel tanks, heat and all that in true Bonanza fashion, because to me, I always loved the Bonanza mini bike thing. I have ties to that company from Race and Form as a kid, and everybody recognizes that color scheme, those frame bends, that gas tank shape. So yeah, that's where that came from. That model Bonanza would be an SH-1500. That white tank blue frame had a 100cc engine in it originally. I call it the TF for top fuel 1500 because it's the same livery on the colors and badging 
but now it's just got the fuel motor in it. I think that the simplicity of it is what's so intoxicating and so inviting for our young kids. If we can get them started on mini bikes, we know that they'll all be future Hot Rod Magazine readers, that's for sure. One of the things that's making the mini bike resurgence so cool is that Taco is back. It makes you remember when you were 12 years old and your source of wrenching on stuff and hopping stuff up was your mini bike because you couldn't afford a car. And now they're making them again and Taco has gone and made a custom one just for Hot Rod Magazine. Originally, the Taco bikes were commonly metallic purple. They were really well known for that, but they mixed up a special hot rod candy red for this one. And of course, it's also got a wicked little engine in it. This is a Predator seven horse engine that you can get through Harbor Freight Tools, but it's been hopped up by Taco. They've done all sorts of custom stuff to this thing, some of which you can buy at tacominibikes.com. Others, currently are just a custom one-off. For example, this finned side cover, which is sort of mimicking an old finned aluminum valve cover, that's a custom one-off. But from Taco, you can get this gas tank mount, the special header and muffler combo, which sounds really cool and throaty. It's also got a McCuny carb and a special intake manifold and the trick reusable air filter. We're thinking this thing makes almost 10 horse. You ride it up and down the street, and I'm telling you, this thing will throw you directly off the back of the bike. It really is just like 1964 all over again, but with more horsepower. They're cheap to build, or you can go all hanging out with them. It's what hot rodding's all about. Wow, I'm not bleeding yet, but I will be soon. That's it for this time on Hot Rod Unlimited. This one, you just get your hair. The color is cool in the sun. It so does, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. It's a great color. And I feel like like I'd have more uh, more courage in like in dirt, you know? And yeah, because it's something softer than go, asphalt. Yeah, because you know? if you go, yeah. you're gonna go on that.